Incredibly, Cheney is doing this trick with a real armless body double providing the legs. Alonso seems a pleasant enough man who puts up with this situation until his secret is revealed. Alonso is a murderer on the run. He hides his arms because of a congenital defect that would immediately incriminate him. And now Nanon has seen those double thumbs. He visits a surgeon and blackmails him into removing his arms. Bert Lancaster told me when I was working with him once, he, we got talking about Cheney. And Bert Lancaster said, the scene where Cheney realizes he's cut his arms off for nothing was the most emotionally compelling scene he's ever seen an actor do. And it is, when you realize that it's basically shot in a medium close-up. He doesn't use his hands, it's his face. And you can feel the emotional intensity. It just comes right up from the gut. London After Midnight is a lost film, the most eagerly sought after of all the missing Cheneys. I saw London After Midnight. Lon played a straight part of a detective who dresses up as a vampire. And the vampire is, is terrible. <laughs> he had a huge grin, long hair and a top hat, and walked along in a sort of crawling way. I'm convinced that Groucho Marx saw the film and patterned himself after Lon Chaney, that kind of a crouch he had and the way he went around. And if you'd see it today, you may say, why, why, why he's, he's mimicking uh, Groucho Marx. And he certainly did a mysterious glide up from the ceiling, I think, in the room to terrify somebody or other. That was a fantasy. It was so unreal, but the makeup was terrific. He had thin wires that fitted around his eyes so that it would give this hypnotic stare. Then he had a set of upper and lower false teeth. The upper portion had a wire that would hold the corners of his mouth open to give a kind of a fixated grin. And that was it, and a wig, and the characterization itself. One tends to get excited about lost films. I think people would be very disappointed if they saw London after midnight. I didn't enjoy it anything like as much as The Phantom. It was so fantastic and unreal that you couldn't take it seriously. The people who made it obviously didn't. 
and yet it was blamed for a murder in London. A man said he had been so terrified by Cheney, he had had a fit and murdered a woman in Hyde Park. His defence was rejected. Laugh, clown, laugh, saw Cheney cast again as a clown, Tito. It was the Pagliacci story directed by the veteran Herbert Brennan. Tito performs a hazardous act. Cheney was always doubled for scenes like this. This was said to have been the favourite of all his roles, the clown who loves the girl who loves someone else. Tito had found the girl abandoned as a child and brings her up in the circus. Herbert Brennan was a dedicated filmmaker who found himself directing an inexperienced actress in her first featured role, Loretta Young, aged 14, whose real name was Gretchen. It seemed he had to have a patsy. Naturally, he picked on the most vulnerable one, and I was it. He called me in. Gretchen, come here. And I stand there, and he said, I don't know what ever gave you the idea that you could ever be an actress. He would rip me up one side and down the other, and he would do it at least twice a week. But never when Lon Chaney was on the set. The minute Lon would come on the set, he said, all right, ready. All right, Gretchen, go to the dressing room, get yourself fixed up. As long as Chaney was around, he behaved. And I didn't know anything about acting. Anyway, uh, Chaney saw that. From then on, he, he never left the stage while I was working, ever. But he really directed me. He did it in such a manner that uh, nobody else knew it. Uh, I don't think even Brennan was conscious of it. Alongside the tragedy, there was often humor in Cheney's roles. Cheney plays Froso, a magician who loves his wife and is horrified when she leaves him for Crane, played by Lionel Barrymore. His wife returns but dies and leaves Froso with her daughter. He brings the girl up in the worst of the African brothels, for he knows her to be Crane's. The girl was played by Mary Nolan. Froso repeats his stage act for the benefit of Crane, who remembers it from all those years ago. Rosso tells him it is his daughter. Cheney goes from one end here where he's taking sheer delight 
and you see it go across the spectrum to the horrendous realization that it's his daughter he's put through this. tears well up in his eyes and he's clutching at his throat and I mean even though this is a silent film you can hear the the wail that he's giving out While the City Sleeps was a character study of a detective close to retirement. Whatever it is he's doing, he has the command of that skill. Uh, it looks like this character has been doing whatever it's been doing for years. Cheney's policeman behaved as in real life not as glamorized for the screen. His character is secretly in love with the girl, Anita Page, but he tries to keep to a fatherly concern, brilliantly caught in this scene. Gangster films had been given a boost by the success of Paramount's thriller Underworld, so this MGM film tried to outdo the climactic gunfight. Lon Chaney's final silent film proved to be Thunder. It has also been lost for many years. He played Grumpy Anderson, an old-time engineer who will take his train through hell or high water, but refuses to hitch on a private car for a nightclub singer. She rides on the footplate with his son, the fireman. <laughs> make his character real, he found a pair of overalls that one old train engineer was wearing and he made a deal with him. I'll buy you a brand new pair if you give me yours so I can wear it in the movie. And